guy on the ham radio or the guy on the AM radio yeah. that no one listens to, and he's holding down the post. Like there's a romance to it's like a lighthouse, right? It's it's like the modern day equivalent of like a lighthouse operator. Um, but the medium is just keeps the medium just keeps changing. But we're still like we're still like holding down some kind of post in the world. And at this point, it is for the imagination and it is for magic. I was unknowingly doing what would be magic, but I I wasn't consciously doing it at all. Mm -hmm. But I would listen to people talk about it. And I was always curious, like, what are they actually, what's going on here? And uh, providing, and that's, I think, speaking to holding the post, that's what part of holding the post is, is, is saying there's more to what's going on around you mm -hmm. than you might realize. And yeah. I think that's another service that, that these sorts of conversations have. Hello and welcome to the Spirit Box podcast, where we explore folklore, magic, the world of the spirits and everything in between. Today we welcome Reverend Jangle Bones and Kurt Huggins to the show, both our magicians and the hosts of the Brilliant Soapbox podcast. Uh, the Good Reverend is an animist, practitioner, prayer writer, course facilitator, Buddhist dabbler, recovered addict and indeed podcast host. Kurt is a New York Times best-selling illustrator who has worked in comics, films and television and holds a strong belief that all creative acts are acts of magic. A view which he represents and elaborates on on the Soapbox podcast. Now in the show, we, we talk about the concept of holding the post. Holding the post for the imagination, meaning understanding and being aware of, or becoming aware of rather, that there's more going around you than you might realize. And we discuss what that means in relation to one's dharma. In that, telling stories about magic, telling stories about the, the, the strange, the unexplainable, and people's experiences and reflections on various forms of creative media is a form of kind of sowing seeds of, of the imaginal and magic uh, across, across the podcast airwaves. It's, it's an interesting conversation and one that I found very relatable. We also get into my love of mudlarking YouTubers and, um, and Arthur Beale jumpers. Great jumpers, really good jumpers. And they uh, get into the quite disturbing story of smoking on, which our guests will explain in due course. In the Plus Show, we discuss the influence of angels in the process of creating uh, the, the, the show Soapbox, how um, drug addiction can be a form of initiation, and Reverend Jangle Bones talks about the, the coursework that he's created, tie amulets and the use of merit. The merit is a really, really interesting idea. So I, if you're listening to the Plus Show, really tune in for that one. The idea of doing good and that good act is dedicated to the entity or spirit you're working with. Rev also regales us with a astonishing slash horrifying story of caving with the goal of uh, eliciting a visionary state and meeting a spirit. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. So if you want to hear the show, if you want to hear the full plus show, you know what to do. Join the Patreon and um, and become a plus show member. Equally, if you're watching this on the YouTubes, click the like, subscribe, you know all the stuff. And if you really like the show, why not give us a nice five stars? Okay, that's enough waffles. Let's get on with the show. Reverend Jangle Bones and Kurt Huggins, you are very, very welcome to the Spirit Box. Nice to have you on the show, guys. It's Great a real lot. It's an it's an honor. It's exciting to be on the show. Oh, uh, thank you. Really, uh, really kind of you. Um, so a couple of months back, um, I was on your show, uh, Soapbox. When was that? Just before before Christmas, or a couple um, of months before? Them? I know it was cold, but it's still cold now. Yeah, well, you live in like proper like winter Europe. Yeah, so, yeah, not like kind of drizzly land like me. <laughs> oh, it's it's then, uh, we don't get that much snow. So oh, really? Okay, I thought it was like yeah. yeah. No, it's uh, I I I actually moved to the stupid winter area of of the U.S. I'm in Burlington, Vermont now, which is 
uh the 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 apparently the world record lowest temperature on earth or something just happened and like an observatory <laughs> like like negative 140 degrees celsius or some oh, insanity Jesus i don't God. i don't know they're like colder than mars <laughs> oh no <that's laughs> like I don't know like what's happened to me now of late because I have like no tolerance for the cold. Mm. Like like um like my fingers go numb, like really like not at significant low temperature yeah. at all. Like like this this jumper, right? I fucking love this jumper. Right. I've got it, I've got I've got two of these. We will get to the point in a second. <laughs> all right. We will get to the point to talk about my jumper. But... No, this is a jumper review show. <laughs> yeah, good, good luck getting to the point you know who you invited on this is true this is true it's like this is the same type this is the same brand of jumper right that like shackleton went to like the the arctic with or, or the antarctic right it's the same <laughs> it's the same company they're like 500 years old and i'm like i just want one of them to sit in my living room no i don't need to explore the, the polar regions i just get a bit my neck gets a bit cold you know, <laughs> so well, I, I recommend Arthur Beale is the name of the company. I highly recommend them. Um, right. Really, really worth it. No? Check, check this out. Look, 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 they come with this little thumb thing. You put your thumb in through there. <laughs> now, no, as we've made the, be, uh... the the standard kind of you know formal and regal start to my uh, occult and paranormal adjacent podcast, <laughs> um, gentlemen, could you introduce yourselves? Kurt first. Uh, oh, me first. Uh, so my name is Kurt Huggins. I'm primarily an illustrator, uh, concept artist, storyboard artist, uh, but uh, I'm also uh, a practicing uh, magician. And um, I uh, co-host the show, The Soapbox, with my my good friend Brian here. Uh, and uh, which kind of happened uh, indirectly because of angels. So... We can we can we can follow that path at some point, but uh, yeah, uh, Brian, if you would. Uh, yeah, I'm Brian. I go by Rev and Jangle Bones uh, on the internet, and um, God, I'm so bad at talking about myself like this. <clears throat> um, I don't know. I'm a I'm a magician as well. I'm a recovered addict. Um, I'm really into reanimating christianity and kind of approaching christian spirits from an animist perspective and, and an animist foundation um and that's been working out well for me in my own practice and then um uh i like to write prayers i like to compile um workings and i have a course for uh healing ancestral trauma and uh elevating the dead and getting in touch with land spirits and things um and yeah, um, lately dipping my toes in Buddhist currents um, by my, by way of the Thai cult and amulets, uh, which has kind of led me in that direction, which now things are getting really interesting with the blending of the two um, and how those altars are starting to interact with each other sometimes and stuff like that. So I'm just kind of along for the ride, taking notes and um, we've got a little, a nice little discord community that's kind of born out of like our podcast and uh tim timothy sailor from um nightbird radio podcast is like kind of our sister show um called numinots and uh and yeah that's that's about all i know to to say like it's a you know a resume or something though no. you're hired <laughs> yeah yeah totally <laughs> awesome awesome some, some really cool stuff there um so Soapbox, your 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 show is kind of how we got to 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 meet. meet. Um, I don't know why I did air quotes. Do you know, <laughs> they can see them. Yeah, it's just sometimes my middle agedness overtakes me. <laughs> it's, it's embarrassing. I well, I I I I totally respected it. I, I, I did not you. see that. Very as graceful a of you. Yeah, yeah, that's very graceful of you. Can I not um, be doing ASL this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so your your show, I um, I think is a, is a really novel idea. I um, just as we were chatting beforehand, um, about kind of inviting guests who are known uh, in other fields, um, 
but asking them kind of what their I, I get how would you say like your favorite cultural expression your favorite artistic um medium is and to talk through it you know it's, it's i think it's a really interesting idea it's quite a disarming idea as well because it makes people get used to kind of talking about their thing you know yeah um, or you you you've come at it from a totally different angle i think it's quite a, a good way to to get people to show a different aspect of themselves um so kind of where did that concept come from for, for me, I think a lot of a lot of my life and a lot of the things that I do are um, less of a choice and more of like looking at all the things that are possible given my limitations and then uh, finding like that everything just kind of points in one direction. It's just like, oh, well, th this is the thing that I do. Um, and it just kind of feels like that. And I might come up with excuses for it on the surface, but it just feels like very Dharma-like. Um, and this is one of those things where like all the logic led to this, but it was like, I had the initial idea of something like it. And then I kind of discarded it. Like, I don't know if people would be into that. I don't know if I can do that. Um, and then we just decided to start a show and see what would happen. And then it ended up becoming that. And um, yeah, I guess, I guess as it goes on, you kind of figure out why you're on the ride. And for me, it's been like, there's been a lot of medicine in podcasting for one thing, which I think is a really important thing to mention that like uh, getting over uh, sort of being traumatized from wokeness uh, to the point of being like afraid to express your opinion or make jokes or anything at all because of just the, the way that people get like canceled and piled on um, like nobody wants that to happen to them. And there's something that happens. I think if you were in the middle of it or you had a lot of friends that were in it. So there's, there's something, there's some medicine in, in learning to find your voice again and learning to take criticism again and knowing that people are talking shit about you and just being like, cool with that. Um, and like, so that's like a secondary thing I didn't really see you coming, but the concept, it, it's like, it serves a lot of functions. Like, I think like you're saying, it takes people and gives them an opportunity to step outside their box, but it also kind of, something I didn't anticipate, but that I feel like is really needed is that it it kind of makes occult conversations more accessible to people that aren't already in the occult world. Even though I don't like the word occult, but that's, you know, it's, it's like when I say that, I kind of mean internet occult culture. I don't actually mean people that are magicians, right? Um, the occult to me is that this these days, because uh, the, the magic isn't hidden anymore. Um, but, uh, yeah, and I think I think we we've tried to have like um some some artists and some some authors and things on too. And what we're finding is like those people like are all they all know what we're talking about, right? They're they're all magic too. And I, I find that there's this sort of high magic but low brow uh ground that I felt like like now that we're there, I can see that it didn't seem like it was really occupied already. But it was, it's the kind of thing where you can't like, if I, I never would have been able, I would never, but it wouldn't have been smart enough to come up with the idea myself is what I'm saying. Like it, it just sort of happened. That was a really long way to say that. So. <laughs> well, there's, a, there's another aspect too, in that, um, I mean, to your point about it, disarming people, uh, I I've found for myself when I, whenever I was approaching someone I admired, if I knew something that they, that we both shared an enjoyment of it was it was very easy to to uh actually develop a personal relationship because there's there's not this need and want going directly it's uh it's two people appreciating a completely different thing and that opens stuff out it 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 keeps uh because i think most of these most of these shows are are it's like a direct interview and uh i you know I, <laughs> case in point we're happening right now it's this like you're wrestling with this like narcissism about uh, like uh, talking yourself up or whatever, and so if you have this, the if you have like a a work of art that you enjoy, it's an escape hatch, and it's also almost every creative thing you can. Well, no, I think straight up every creative thing is a piece of magic, so <clears throat> it's very easy to to take that and unpack the components from a piece of media like that um and i yeah it just becomes a great uh a great 
point of sharing and found foundation for a discussion. There's also the hope that that people that aren't into magic at all just happen to be like a really big fan of Roadhouse. Yeah. <laughs> And end up accidentally connecting with something we're saying instead of being like, wait, this is weird. Is that Roadhouse with Patrick Swayze? Yeah. yeah. We- Hell of a movie. <laughs> it, it was funny because I think it I think we talked about it for maybe 10 minutes. <laughs> that entire discussion. And that's a that's a thing that'll happen too, is that is that so most and that's what makes us different too, is, is you know, most people it's a it's a movie review, so the it yeah. becomes all about the movie, but but really, the movie or the book, whatever we're doing, is really just a, a launching point. And so uh, sometimes the discussion of whatever we're discussing is like really falls into the background. And it it travels off into uh, people's magical experience. Yeah. People's, yeah, wh- how they actually relate to the world. And um, I don't know, It's it's been really valuable. Yeah, I can imagine. Like, I mean, <clears throat> I think that really really interesting context uh, for from both of you there um and I, and I do I understand what you both mean you know having I mean I think I'm about this time next month about three years since oh, kind wow. of started spirit box congratulations happy anniversary yeah thank you thank you very much the maze that got this long um <laughs> but e- equally like it the whole process reveals stuff to me I mean that really uh, i wasn't expecting at all and, and we can chat about that probably later but but um it kind of harks back to what you guys were saying about art and about creativity it is magic you know yeah like it is a form of of spirit um communication you know be it inspiration be it uh, even a more kind of like directly targeted compulsion um I mean, even the words in spirit, uh, inspiring, yeah, yeah, um, t- tells us, tells <laughs> tells us what's going on, um, and I and I think with with things like podcasts, where they're seen as kind of like a media, you know, format, and you know, rightly so, most are, but but I think some of them, they do have an artistic bend to them is similar to a piece of art um where it's there is a long-term meaning um through following the journey of something and like when i when i started this i was really just like curious as to i've experienced some weird stuff i'm just driven to find out more i had been working with magic for 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 years in my own way um like like everybody else saw grant morrison and whatever 1990 1996 and was fucking about with sigils for for 10 years and all that kind of you know the the gateway the gateway that uh that sigils are into into other stuff um but I think the the thing for me, more than anything else, uh, rather than the actual experience of compelling a, a a spirit, was it was more about what is it? Like it, it was just kind of that question: what is it? Uh, and I feel like that's in your show that you're asking a very similar question, but from a totally different perspective, which I find really really interesting. Yeah, yeah, I really, I really vibe with that, um, that childlike curiosity that um, I feel like is sorely underrepresented in in sort of cogent or coherent magical um, voices. Uh, there's a lot of talk about how to compel right and stuff, um, but that curiosity is, yeah, it's what drives both of our our little projects here and the, and it's funny because it's it's like you're saying it's it's something that a lot of things happen you don't anticipate and it and you realize like podcasting sounds like just something and it gets like made fun of as a medium and it and it has a it deserves it in a lot of ways because statistically speaking most of them aren't that great but uh but they the whole like the young ideas of like the the concept of like 
people don't have ideas, ideas of people. Yeah. Is podcasting isn't an exception to that. And it's really funny when it dawns on you that like, oh, this thing is its own. Yeah. All right. Now it's doing its own thing. Like that succinct, you know, view ha- happened to me in, in, in such a startling way that um I'm I'm kind of in a place now where I'm like, I don't really think I had a choice to, to, <laughs> to do the show, right? You know, like that. Uh, I mean, not as trite as that sounds, you know, I didn't have a choice to be a podcaster. <laughs> well, no, that, that really rings something in, in me be, it, because there's always been for me a romanticization of the guy on the ham radio or the guy on the AM radio yeah. that no one listens to and he's holding down the post. Like there's a romance to, it's like a lighthouse, right? It's, it's like the modern day equivalent of like a lighthouse operator. Um, but the medium is just keeps, the medium just keeps changing, but we're still like, we're still like holding down some kind of post in the world. And mm-hmm. at this point it is for the imagination and it is for magic where uh, the points where that's allowed to exist, it feels like are getting, like they're getting more and more encroached upon. Mm-hmm. Um, I think mental health awareness is going to be a big thing that we're going to see more of. And I think that might have implications for people like us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Possibly. Well, I, there, there's also, um, you know, speaking to the whole, like holding the post, like what, what these shows sort of, what these shows do and spirit box is definitely one of them. Uh, is it, People who don't do this and don't have any sort of interaction or, or even don't believe it, like listening to people talk about it gives them uh, gives them courage to get off the armchair because that's always that that doesn't I don't know. I, it's funny in the circles I'm around that doesn't get talked about very much mm-hmm. anymore, but that for the longest time, I didn't actually directly. I was unknowingly doing what would be magic, but I. I wasn't consciously doing it at all, mm-hmm. but I would listen to people talk about it. And I was always curious, like, what are they actually, what's going on here? And uh, providing, and that's, I think, speaking to holding the post, that's what part of holding the post is, is is saying there's more to what's going on around you mm-hmm. than you might realize. And yeah. I think that's another service that that these sorts of conversations have. Yeah, provide. that makes a lot of sense. You know, and like one, one of the things that, I wanted to do when I when I started uh, uh, Spirit Box was get as many viewpoints on like other beings as possible. That was really it, and just to kind of add to the body of of knowledge or access uh, the accessible knowledge um, through the show. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, it's 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 funny. All these things are they. I think I think why what makes people trepidatious about it is um is it's a, it's like a tantalizing like thread on a sweater that you want to pull but you don't realize it's actually a rip cord and it just ejects you from whatever your reality was to, like it's it's you can't it, there's not really a half measure it's not like oh I'm just gonna do this little thing like they talk about magic ruining your life and and I think this is kind of what they mean is that you get on the other side of it and you're like oh well shit. All right, <laughs> nothing to what I thought about reality is what it is. Yeah, Christ, yeah, <laughs> I, it's it's so true. Like, I, I, and it is a challenge. Like, it is a difficult yeah. thing, like to marry up kind of kind of normy life with kind of when you find yourself looking back and you're like, whoa, I'm really on the other side of the road now. Yeah, <laughs> like, um, but even like the other side of the road, do, do, like that, it's not ended up being anything, like. I expect it. You know, it's been absolutely brilliant and wonderful, huge mental ways. You know, um, but like, you know, you hear all about this magical excess, and you you see the kind of like the tabloids painting magicians as like you know these 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 uh, black black magic orgies, and you know of, of these excessive all all this kind of stuff. Yeah, I I've ended up completely sober. No longer smoke, fast a lot, you Excessive know. And I've put maybe I've put a lot of that hedonistic energy into my uh, into my <laughs> into my Arthur Beale sweaters. <laughs> Arthur Beale, by the way, if you want to sponsor the show, I'm very open to that. 
very open to that. <laughs> I I'm I just want to say I'm ordering one right now. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wanted to say to that point. Uh, I think that is also another reason why it's really important to have people that aren't um, trying too hard to pretend they're academic mm-hmm. all the time. Like I think there is a complex in uh, the magical communities about like. The discrediting that feeling of like people don't take you seriously coming yeah. down the pipeline, and it, I think it definitely affects people that were academics way more that yeah. like have been through, and like I fucking haven't. Excuse me if I I don't know if I can cuss. I thought it was okay, but look and go first. No worries. <laughs> yeah, I know there's cussing on your show. I listen to your show, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. What was I saying? About kind of that kind of academic. Yeah, yeah. It just I think yeah. it I think it affects people more than they realize. And they end up trying really hard to sound really smart. And like yeah. I didn't I didn't become a magician so I could, you know, sound on point all the time. Like I'm yeah. much more like dirt under my fingernails. Like I would rather be speaking in tongues and occasionally something that makes sense falls out. But that's just my style. Um, but I think it's important for people to be able to listen to conversations of people who are having high-minded discussions. And then also dropping a uh, like a fart joke. Yeah, totally. um, then you can see like I pull that sweater and it unravels my life. But like I'm still going to be me on the other side because these guys are still normal. Um, yeah, totally. The, the other side of it as well is that like some spirits are really fucking funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like I mean, I've had experiences where I'm like I'm literally having the piss taken out of me by spirits. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You're like, yeah, all right, okay, you know. <laughs> I like so I like we you there still is that hangover, and I, I don't really know where it comes from, but yeah, maybe it does come from kind of just like you know, Western occultism through kind of like the Victorian uh re, the kind of revival and, and back beyond has always had that kind of like I mean you know, it's roots in, in, in science with, with kind of alchemy or what have you. There's always that element to it. Access to, 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 to books, access to learning materials, access to the, to the tools of, of ritual magic, you know, whereas witchcraft is innately accessible. Um, and it, it, it's, which is, I think where, you know, fundamentally my, my heart is, and that's become mm-hmm. very apparent to me. And I have, I have a lot of respect for ritual magic, but I understand exactly what you're talking about, you know. Um, and there can you, there can be a gatekeeper vibe mm-hmm. off that, you know. Um, whereas with witchcraft, it's like, you know, you, you, you're talking about rural people walking home at night and being initiated mm-hmm. by... by by the dark man or you know one of his avatars so like who can't read or write um mm. so well you're getting a lot of similar results yeah you know, it, and i say i think it's, it's important to kind of register that but yeah it's, it's, it's a really good point um, go ahead go ahead yeah, that's that stuff is where my my heart truly is is in, in the folk, the that diasporic, the the like the average person who who just has the intuitive knowledge. It um I see a lot of a lot of congratulating that, but I don't see a lot of people doing that. Mm-hmm. I see them like, you know, uh like there's yeah, I don't know. I think there's um there's a certain kind of intuitive current that is underrepresented. I'm not sure why exactly. Um, right. Maybe it's just that those people are in the woods and not on the internet. Well, I, I, I think you're probably right. You know, I, I mean, I mean, certainly, I'm like, I, I apologize to everybody because I just always do this, but like, it's, you know, I, I had direct communication. With, with you know my allies, allies and my kind of spirit patron of like don't don't engage and and um extremely limit your your participation mm-hmm. you know 
which was great after I built the Sigil engine, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but apart, but apart from that, like it, uh, that is something that I I have pursued, um, and what I've started to understand more from it is is this kind of these lifestyle changes that I've been kind of led to, you know, um, I, you know, with some debate, not just fucking let around by the nose, you know, um, but it has allowed me to kind of clear a lot of the background noise, clear a lot of the kind of the, the disturbances between me and kind of achieving more with my magical practice. Yeah. With, with witchcraft definitely has like, um, so like um, the stewardship definitely goes both ways, mm. but I don't think I would have got there without the podcast. Mm. Yeah, I can imagine the just the sheer quantity of these sorts of conversations. Um, when you like, if I, I can't imagine if I'd have started it, if I'd have started doing this three years ago, mm. like just the the richness that I would have already inside you know like logged in my body just the vibrations of all those talks and things so mm. it's a really uh it's a really powerful thing i'm looking forward to looking back in three years remembering this conversation and being like so this is what it feels like to have that much <laughs> well i mean hey i think one of the strangest things is uh, for me is that like um as you said, there's like uh, maybe I don't know, like a hundred and hundred and fifteen shows, something like that, um, of these type of conversations. So whatever many hours that is, um, you 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 kind of start. It becomes more of your world. Yeah, you know, like um, like I end up with kind of two lives. Again, I think anybody, any magical pr practitioner ends up with two lives. But, you know, it, it's a kind of a shift of, of like your peer group is slightly different. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> I had a lot of my former colleagues who were like, have you seen Dara's social media? No fucking, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, it it is it is uh so I'm 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 a little closer to that than than you are. So I've uh so I'm kind of gingerly sharing the podcast here and there where I'm like I don't know what these people are going to think about these conversations I'm having on here cuz cuz it, it's like it, the, when I'm talking with Brian it's like Brian's been a big part of uh uh my development and yeah. basically in the last couple of years like the stuff we've all hung out and done together and you know there's a there's an intimacy and an understanding with that that it's like you had like outside of of this conversation here is like i'm gonna have to edit mm. like what do i share like yeah. like how do i are can i share this but do it in a way so that maybe they understand and i'm i'm assuming that after a while that just goes away and you don't care anymore and it's just <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I, I wouldn't know because I just moved. To, I just like ended up in a Danish rural village where almost no one speaks fluent English. So those situations don't come up. I think my spirits were just like, look, I had a rough time throughout your 20s with the drugs and all that. So we're going to catch your break. We're just going to put you somewhere where it's real quiet. You don't have to explain yourself for a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, what, one of the things that I find really interesting is is and i you know this i project a lot it's one of the things i've become <laughs> i've become really aware of when i gotta you know listen back to my own shows and edit them i'm like yeah just because you experience that doesn't really make it like a, a rule tara you know? <laughs> <laughs> that might just be you you know yeah. like but i i know it's kind of patterns and and one of the patterns i've noticed is that like it seems to be with, I think more with witchcraft, but people start this and they end up in rural places. Yeah. Right. There seems to be a pattern with that, you know, and 
I mean, really clear. You know, I don't mean that like all. You know, you have to move to the boonies if you're going to be like a witch. I obviously don't think that's the case, but it does seem to be a pattern <laughs> in in that happening. You know, or at least frequenting the boonies. You know, uh, and, and I think that is part of the call of this stuff that you it wants you it wants you to meet it face to face at some stage yeah it and there also uh that there's a removal of that shunt that's between you and the natural world that i think is something mm-hmm. that becomes a part of when the world start when you realize how inspirited the world is suddenly yeah uh, a forest has so much more to offer you than a city yeah. street there's so much more happening and it's so much more um it's a well that's not to say that a city street isn't alive but mm-hmm. um there's a different quality to it yeah and and especially if you've been deaf to that mm-hmm. then suddenly be aware of it is is remarkable and profound and mm-hmm. that's also i think part of the appeal is that yeah um you know, so much of the world was just a bunch of empty things for so long, and now that's not the case anymore. Mm. Um, so I think it it makes it makes the rural world much more uh, packed and alive than I think. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've noticed that, like, um, like I always wanted to be around people my whole life. I was an only child, and that might have played into it, but like uh like throughout all my formative years and up and in, well into my 30s it was like i just want to be distracted all the time i had bad fomo like i wanted to be out all the time with people and <laughs> something happened when i got clean coming up on like five years ago and i just haven't missed it at all like i haven't wanted um i haven't been bored since i realized everything else is also conscious it's like like all these beings are there and the di- the communication is difficult and it's different, but the complications are like so, f- so much more or less frustrating. <laughs> like trying to figure out how to communicate with plant takes a lot of practice and patience and work, but like, it's not the kind of frustrating, fruitless, like miscommunications that happen with people all the time. And, uh, and I know that like there are these voices that come into my head sometimes that are like, well, that's, you know, like you're not supposed to do that. That's like you're being antisocial and like you're here to interact and blow. It's like, well, not. <laughs> but but then this stronger voice rises up from within and it's like, you guys are echoes. And the truth is that not everyone has to be someone who wants to interact with other humans all the time. The truth is that a lot of people lived in little shacks in the middle of nowhere and they knew like two neighbors and like maybe you guys are my two neighbors you know what i mean maybe that's all you know it it doesn't there's there shouldn't be pressure i think on anyone to um to live in a city especially i've I've been thinking a lot about city spirits lately um and just the idea of like populated areas and how they couldn't have always been so so toxic and and horrible and like Mm -hmm. Just thinking about that, like, are there still places that you move to a city and you're like, oh, the the city spirit here is healthy and good, and yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting thing to uh, to ponder how how you're yeah. the the country feels alone until you're an animist, and then you're like, this is a city. Yeah, do you know I kind of pulling that thread a bit, like um, I don't know where I heard this or, or read it, but. It, it was kind of like a, a framing of like the average London commuter sees more people just on their morning run into work than a Bronze Age person did in their entire life. Whoa. Yeah, just that one morning, you see more people on the tube. I could believe that. Yeah. That's, I could totally believe that. Yeah. Yeah. I lived in, uh, I lived in New York uh, for a long time mm. and, and it, there is that and it also i'm sure london is the same way it's not just you're not just seeing more uh english people you're seeing people from all over the world yeah yeah. um and interacting and it's 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 also interesting to think about because um you know we're built from 
place too. Like if you get if your food is localized to your area, you're literally replacing parts of your body with the land that's around you. Yeah. But then if you live in a city, like that food is coming from everywhere. Yeah. Uh, so like, uh, it, it makes I don't know. It makes me question of like, how, how is that affecting your rea- your relationship with that particular place? Because it's not exactly that place that you're you're getting built from. You're not in the cycle of that place exactly. You're you're mm-hmm. in the cycle of the lar- the world at large. Um, and maybe that's part of the spirit of those places of some place like New York or London is that it's because actually a friend of mine said this is that like New York isn't actually an American city. It's a city for the world. Yeah. And and I'm sure London's very similar to that where that's really um, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I really like that. I. And speaking of kind of that from a magical perspective, um, one of the things that I occasionally find myself watching are um, mudlarker videos. Are you, are you familiar with I mudlarkers? Don't... No. So mudlarkers are, um, they basically got their name from like, I think it's like 18th century, um, you know, um, scruffy urchins basically desperately poor people um, who were exploring the shoreline, the foreshore of the Thames. Oh, for stuff that has fallen out of boats or. Okay. Know. I knew, I know exactly what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. So there's like YouTubers who do this. And um, it's fucking captivating. I love it. Like they're basically looking for treasure along the Thames. But like, if you're in any way kind of interested in history, even these tiny things that they find, they find like lots of like these, um, you know, it, like Edwardian and Victorian clay pipes, you know, mm. the Thames is just full of them, you know, because basically they're just like cigarette butts and we just throw them away, right? Um, loads of bones, but they they pull up all these kinds of things. And one of the things they pull up, um, which kind of you the reason you triggered this 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 um path of, of conversation is all the time now that they find statues of Ganesha and like uh, Hindu, like clay lamps or, or you know, votive, uh, but like votive gifts um, that are particularly uh, Indian, find them in, mm. in, in the Thames quite regularly, um, which is really, really interesting, you know. And of course, people, magicians are always throwing kind of um, votive gifts into the into the Thames to try and get the the blessing of the spirit. Um. Actually, I I think I saw one where there's like maybe three or four of these uh, model archers and and one one lady she pulled up a silver coin she found a silver coin and I, and um I think it either had the seal of Babylon or the universal hexagram on it <clears throat> pentagram I can't remember which one um yeah it's just like did they carve it in like 1995. <laughs> Do you know what? Let me let me see if I can dig it out here. Uh, that would be really funny if they were like, "Oh no, it's it's like five years old. <laughs> it's plastic." Wait, what? Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> Hang on a second. No, that's that's. It's also. Hmm. They're always pulling out live munitions as well. Um, <laughs> Like all the stuff from like the World Wars. Uh, oh yeah, that man it freaked me out. Like my wife was like, "We should go to the uh, the west coast of Denmark sometime and and hang out and walk along the beach, but only part of the beach because some of it still has mer- German bombs in it." <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Might give oh. it a miss. Might give it a miss. <laughs> um, yeah, there's loads of areas in Europe like that, isn't there? Like a. Uh, I was in Bosnia a couple of years ago and it was very much like that. The hope that was just like my my favorite is I <laughs> think somewhere off the coast of Georgia somewhere, there's a just a lost nuclear warhead. Oh, well, they, they just really? found, they just found a, a lost a lost uh like a huge, huge, huge bomb here, like in Denmark, lodged in something. Um yeah, not like this year. Wow. It was like something that was in danger of taking out several towns. Jesus wept. Um, I don't remember 
we add the details. There you go. For for your viewing pleasure at a later date. Oh, cool. Step into the world of um English mudlarkers. <laughs> Sneesh. Sneesh. <laughs> They, uh, but it's still, they... you know, faintly hypnotic. It's like it's 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 one a.m. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm watching people look for shit on the Thames. <laughs> don't know, don't know. It's strangely compelling. But there I, you I go. Think, I think you already wrote the uh, the the marketing slogan. Uh, <laughs> hypnotically dangerous. Is that what you yeah. said? Yeah. <laughs> I thought I thought wide awake at three a.m. was good too. <laughs> yeah, that, that's it's dangerous stuff. It really is. I mean, I've watched all. Of, I've, I've watched, I'm a big fan of fishing with John, and that's just like, like famous people, semi-famous people. Yeah. Fishing, and it's, it's kind of funny, but it's mostly yeah. just bad. <laughs> and I love it so much. <laughs> okay, okay. Here's here's a really really stupid thought I just had. Uh, so is the uh, is is the American version of this uh, Pawn Stars, where uh, we don't have the Thames, but we have Las Vegas pawn shops. But I, I I do enjoy. It. I like storage wars as well. <laughs> that's occasionally I, like the I used to. In terms of guilty pleasure for a while. That's that's not, that's not allowed in my family's house because they actually own storage units. <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh well, what are they going to find? That's me. Really I actually I kind of like the idea of treasure hunting. That's mainly it. To be honest, yeah. but, you know, I've got some cool yeah. stuff from, uh, from the ones that I helped them clean out. Uh, We've we, there. There may or may not still be a man's ashes in their garage. Oh, that's crazy! They couldn't bring themselves to like, you know, they couldn't throw it out, and they're like, yeah. um. But now, next time I visit home, I'm gonna have to like do something with that. Because well, I mean, it would be time. yeah, the 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 necromantic, I know, opportunities are are are, are vast there, you know. <laughs> Uh, but like that, yeah. Like it, those kind of strange YouTube shows, like particularly that one you made, like 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 fishing with John. You know, it kind of brings me back to to your show of of like you're seeing people in a different light, you know. Mm. Um, and I think it tells you more about them and kind of how they got to where they are a bit more, you know. Because and again, exactly like you were talking about making that point of how there can be almost like a kind of formal academic um element to magic and I, you know and again that's 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 no no disrespect to that like it has absolutely has its place and it's one of the reasons that we you know have a cult tradition um but it's interesting seeing kind of individuals like that kind of you know showing a little bit more about themselves from from a different from a different different perspective exactly. In, in in that light, what's been the most kind of um or maybe there's been a few of them, but what's been kind of the most interesting kind of aha moments or hmm. where things went in a different line or you're like, oh man, I never looked at it that way before. Yeah. Uh man, so much of it has been that. Um I mean the Roadhouse episode, uh Remy uh our friend blew our minds with like an astrological take on um on the character on the main character whose what? name I forget. But um uh, and well, I forget what it was now, but it was like going from a, a debilitated Saturn to a, an exalted Saturn or a debilitated Mars to an exalted Mars. Uh I think it, yeah it was Mars and Libra to Mars and Capricorn. Like what? throughout the course of the movie that's his transformation. And I it was just spot on <laughs> that one was really fun uh and then it felt like we nailed it and that was all we talked about the movie i think because it was <laughs> um kurt you got we, uh, well, we had a we had a, we had a we had a really long discussion about conan which is one of my favorite movies and mm. um looking at it from a, a magical perspective was actually really great too and and um because the it's encoded within that movie all over the place and yeah like this idea of um the riddle of steel steel and it being about the joining of the flesh and the will together um yeah and i, I that in particular was was revelatory because you know that's a movie that i've watched a million times and i love it but then to have someone have another a whole other level 
a thought about it is like exciting. And that's, that's another one of the great benefits of like having a piece of art to talk about is because like, um, in a sense, um, that art, it takes the audience to sort of make the art to find, to complete it. That's okay. always like a, a yeah. little bit. Of, and, and so every, every time you get someone else's views on it, it's like, oh, there's another facet to this diamond. Um, and, and I get to see it in a completely different way. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's, that's been exciting. And, and, and funny enough, um, uh, we just did an episode about, um, Serenity, which is the, um, uh, it's the, the it's sci-fi show. The, yeah, it was the sci-fi show Firefly. It had a, okay. Yeah. Okay. Movie, right? Yeah. They had a movie. Um, and, uh, uh, we had a guest who was like really enthusiastic and got made, made me appreciate the movie because it's actually a movie I don't really like that much, but he hearing his views on it and like, well, there's a lot here and like, um, it makes me appreciate this thing that I normally wouldn't or the problems I have with it. Like I don't, I didn't bring them up at all because it's, it's, you know, part of it, part of it is like you invite the guest on and then, you know, if they're enthusiastic about something, their enthusiastic enthusiasm will carry you th with them. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and that's, that's fun too, is like learning to love more, mm -hmm. which, uh, I think is always, is always to your benefit. Yeah. Um, there's, I'm sure there's more too that we we would have to have to give a give me a second. Do you have another one you could think of, Brian? I mean, yeah. I'm I'm a huge fan of uh, our episode with uh, that we just did with um, David Simmons. Yeah, that was great too. Like, yeah, it, it was a it was a really beautiful thing to me. Like the whole thing, I went back and listened to it, and I was like, this is this is just such a good episode like taking myself out of it it's just or ourselves out of it it's just the convergence of worlds because he lives in like uh hardcore east baltimore and he's like uh inner city writes about baltimore but he's a horror writer and like he got to talking about how like we invited him on the show and then he was preparing for coming on the show and reading about apotropaic magic. And as soon as he started reading about it, just to know a little something to come on the show, uh, which I thought was really cool. Like, nobody needs to ever do that. The whole idea is like anyone can come, anyone's qualified to come on and talk about something they love. Um, but then he said he started seeing it everywhere. And he's seen people do like locking it up with the right hand gestures or they have to stop and do it again um people pouring out you know a drink for their dead homies and like mm -hmm. it just all this stuff that and then he got into some really really interesting stuff about like this this phenomenon um called smoking on where like gangsters will murder each other and then put out a small a song where they say i'm smoking on so and so and there's like this narrative charm in that like they're like, I'm, I murdered you. And then they'll go like do a video where they're like smoking a blunt on their grave. And it's like, it's yeah. like the darkest, like necromantic domination. Like I murdered you and now I'm disrespecting you. Yeah. Um, and they, and they publicly admit to it, but they do it in code. So it's like not admissible in court, you know, like it's, this is, it's really fascinating. And he, he just like really opened our eyes to a lot and i think he felt kind of the same like we were kind of blowing each other's minds like all, uh, through the whole thing like yeah 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 that you're right that one was that was a really amazing conversation that i don't think i don't think it's been in the magical discourse at all <laughs> and like and uh and that to have the sort of the opportunity to host that is actually really really amazing wow that's so intense yeah, yeah. it's it's super it it blew my mind too. And I was like, that is so dark. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> fucking dark. Yeah, and there's a link to those videos in the show notes. Like it's and the, the way that they're like happy and on a golf course. And yeah, you know, it's weird. Like happy pop <laughs> and the, songs in the background. And the, yeah, and the song's actually kind of good. Like I can't it's help it. Like, <laughs> like yeah, it's, I forget. I think it's I don't remember who it is. Some some super pop star girl. It's crazy. It it's very insane. Wow. Uh, but like no one, no one, 
um, like it, we needed to invite an, an author on that's not in our circles to hear about something like this. And like, that's enriched the hell out of my world too. Cause I mean, I, I was in not, not like East Baltimore, but I mean, I was, I was a drug addict when I lived in New, New Orleans and a lot when I lived in Florida, but New Orleans was the scary part. And uh, so like it, since that episode, I've been reflecting back on my time in dangerous inner city situations and like just contemplating the spirit ecosystems that I, in a way that I didn't get to when I was in it. Yeah. Oh, actually, and that's, um, that's something that's been very, um, revelatory to me is that how many, uh, how many of our guests actually were ex addicts, like people who have gone through this, because there's, there is a harsh initiate initiatory process in that, like becoming an addict and then coming out of it. Um, it's probably the most, um, <laughs> visceral and vicious type of initiation that you could do and mm -hmm. usually to yourself. Um, and, uh, that's, that's been revelatory to me too. How many people have, have gone through that? Yeah. Um, cause I also think there's something about it bringing you so close to death, uh, in so many ways. I think yeah. the addicts that come out of it were probably all tantrics in previous lives. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, what? There's crack now? Oh, that's going to be huge merit. <laughs> back from that shit, I'm going to get so much shot to you. <laughs> how has it, it changed your, your own individual practice, your own magic? How has what changed our magic? Uh, your show. The, the show. Oh, the show. Yeah. I don't know that it has changed my magic yet. It's probably concretized it more. Like that, uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. It's it's um it, because it's you know, it's you're getting all these different lenses into different people's views and you're getting to hear some of their experiences more directly and how they how they relate their there there's you know their experiences to the world and especially a piece of pop culture it's yeah. i would say that i'd say the biggest effect is it's just solidified uh the reality of this for me yeah and it 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 uh it's made me feel more normal mm. uh like and in that i don't you know like we were talking about earlier like there's a certain part of your life you just sort of have to hide this from but then this is like a conduit to where like i can just I don't have to edit like things like I don't have to, you know, filter this through like three layers of like metaphor. I can just directly say, yeah. oh, yeah, I was I was engaging with the spirit. I was engaging with an angel. I was engaging with with something directly. And uh, and, um, you know, I'm sure at some point this will get to the larger world. And it's like these people are fucking nuts. And I'm like, well, I guess so. I mean. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Maybe I mean, you know, I, you know, I mean, I'm I'm just gonna fall back on that. I'm an artist. I'm allowed to be. I don't have yeah, to be yeah, logical yeah, or be. reasonable at all. <laughs> and that's not that's not in the job description. <laughs> <laughs> true. Very true. Um, speaking of angels, you guys mentioned that the the top of the show that kind of angels had um a, a hand in 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 you two starting this project. I think angels have had a hand in uh, a lot of things for, for both of us. Right. But, like, it's a matter of, was it just since this certain time period or did I just start becoming aware of it during this time period? And it's always been that way, which seems more likely since they're a little bit wibbly wobbly when it comes to time. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, look, we started off in a, um, uh, like a side project that just like some people in that were in room soup started together a few years back. Right. And we were using Rudd's keys. Uh, was it Rudd's keys? No, no, it was no it's, keys. it's drawing, drawing spirits in a, it, well, it was uh, always an acronym. I can't remember the exact no, that, name of that's, it. Well, that's just the, that's just the crystal tech. Like, but the, okay. uh, the book was uh, the keys to the gateway of magic. And um, just scrying through the spheres and like 
um, some pretty incredible things happened with that group. We got some pretty consistent messages, some puzzle piece things that fit together that kind of forced us all, <laughs> led us all to not force, but led us all to become friends and and pretty close for a while. And um, and that group kind of uh, went a lot of their separate ways. Um, a few of us, actually, I don't know. Maybe it's just Kurt and I at this point. Uh, Regularly, yes. Kurt and I are still best friends, and I think the rest of the group mostly, we, like, we still talk to some of them. We're still friends with yeah. them. Like, it just, just happened this way. Now, Kurt and I have our own, like, other sort of primary group thing. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, Kurt, do you have things to say about this? Because... Well, so so it's it's one of those you know you track it back where like well if this thing hadn't happened this thing hadn't happened this this wouldn't have happened and so basically the show and our friendship we can track back to that that specific set of workings right and um I mean it's not just the show it's like the Discord group that we have the um I would I would dare even say I don't know Rev would you say the uh, your course would probably would not have happened if it wasn't for that. Yeah, I would say the course was like, mm, yes. I mean, a lot if you travel back along the timeline, but the the course was primarily a Saint Cyprian inspiration. Uh, okay. Like it was, it was like, like you you don't know how you you, you have <laughs> your ancestor situation is messed up enough that you have too much static to visualize. So you can't do Daniel Force tech. So what are you going to do? You're going to figure it out yourself is what you're going to do. <laughs> so like I used uh, Chiron Armand's uh, uh, Ancestor Elevation right from his, his blog and then just added a bunch of things like protections and a triangle and, and things like that. And, um, and then kind of was like, well, hey, this would be useful to give to other people who and then I was like, well, they don't want to really jump straight into this. What if they're new? <laughs> so then I started building onto the back end of it. Like, well, what, the, what do they need to do first? Like, um, let's say getting used to the presence of the dead. So like a whole week on graveyards. And then like before that, they need to be, man, before that, they need to be giving offerings to the land spirits and develop a relationship there and spend time in different sit spots. And and then like, oh, well, what, what do they do after the elevation? <laughs> it just became like a... Eight or it's nine, it's, eight it's or basically nine. a very beautifully condensed magical uh hobo course where you can you can be a wizard hobo and uh and nine easy steps um <laughs> in terms of kind of wrapping all that up if people want to find you guys your work where is the um where's the best place to do so uh really on like on the socials you can go to the uh to like Reverend Django Bones on, on Instagram or on um, Twitter. And I have the, like my um, link tree in there with everything. Okay. Um, or ReverendDjangoBones.com is my blog. Um, on Etsy, the shop is Numenots. Um, yeah. Everything's kind of all over the place. So I need to rein it in and, and, and find a platform that kind of holds it all. But I feel like things have been growing faster than I can keep up with that end because I hate yeah. that end. <laughs> so for now it's a mess but it'll get better and uh soapbox is on what is it like rss dot so it's on rss you can find it on any of the like you can find it on spotify apple music yeah. anywhere um but we are on rss um uh dot com so if you okay. want the rss feed you can go there cool and uh i'm uh you can just go to kurthuggins.com that's my illustration site if you want to hire yeah. me to do any sort of illustration work i'm open for work at the moment and actually um, don't need illustration work done still go to uh kurthuggins.com because his stuff is really awesome go especially look at the illustration section it's incredible stuff and you can also just mail me money i'm 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 cool with that um yeah i i accept if anyone out there has uh uh lightning struck wood uh <laughs> really needs Jesus, kurt this is fucking amazing i'll just go up your site yeah kurt. oh wow oh thank you really good it's funny like people people are like oh brian does magic brian does magic and it's like actually kurt's like the impressive amazing <laughs> 
artist out of the two of us. And like <laughs> that website's yeah. actually due for an update too. I've got a lot of I got a lot of beautiful stuff here. Work I need to put on that thing. He also did the covers for um, all three of my chat books. Oh, cool! That's really cool. Amazing. Well, gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on, on the show. And um, yeah, let's let's do it again soon. Let's yeah, go. we would we would love to. This is uh, really appreciate you having us on. Yeah, it's been great. I, oh, I love it. absolutely the feeling, like you said on our show about like just having a pint with your mates. Like I love it. Thank you so much for inviting us on. My pleasure, lads. Wonderful stuff. My thanks to Kurt Huggins and Reverend Jangle Bones for joining me for an illuminating and enjoyable conversation. Uh, if you want to hear more from both of them, then do check the show notes. Do follow uh, Soapbox. Really interesting show with a different angle on, on some of the guests that you may be used to have heard on other podcasts. So definitely worth your time. Do check the links in the show notes for more. And I'm going to leave it there. I'm Dara Mason, and you've been listening to Spirit Box. Talk soon and take care. Bye.